he throws another one into your head and you say, no, no, devil, greater is he that is in me than you in the world. I refuse to be sick. It seems it's getting worse. Your body's getting hot. You're lying down on the flat of your back. You said, devil, make it hot all you want to. I refuse to be sick. This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Others are out of the room. Get up. You may not be able to move briskly because your body's feeling so terrible. And you go like this and you shut the door. You say, devil, you watch me dance. I refuse to be sick in the name of Jesus Christ. I refuse to be sick. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's in my back. My joints are hurting. And I'm just barely able to move. I said, devil, try your best shot. I refuse to be sick. Woo! The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hey, Abba, say it again, you say, I can't even shout. You say, I can't even shout. And you say, devil, you can still hear me. I may not be able to shout out, but I'm going to... I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be sick. Hallelujah. I refuse. Your head is hurting. Say, yeah, I'll rest when I choose to. I'll rest, up, but I refuse to be sick. He says, Satan, if you think to convert this feeling to sickness, I reject it in the name of Jesus. You're a soldier. The Bible says for us to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Take advantage. Seize it. Don't chicken out. Hey, it's so good. It's so good. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, I don't know what they do. I don't know. He says last week. Yeah, yeah. You now you're talking. He says last week. I don't know. I don't understand. Hey, the other day it was brother so and so. Hey, hey, hey. Now it is me. Hey, hey, I don't know how, what is happening now to all of us. It's not all of us. You are the only one in that boat. <laughs> it's not all of us. What do you mean? I don't understand what's happening to all of us. It's an attack. It's an attack. This is an attack. <laughs> so what are you going? to It's an attack. What are you going to do? It's an attack. He told you before. He said, what? Your head with what? Your helmet of salvation. The breastplate of righteousness. Your loins get about with truth. Put on your shoes. Do you hear me? And then take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Above all, your shield of faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Shout amen. Amen. Your shield of faith. Above all, your shield of faith. You need your shield of faith. Throw it, devil. Throw your best shot. Haven't come to Christ and confessed the Lordship of Jesus over your life. It is unacceptable to reason the way you used to reason. You can't say this how I've always been. You can't be this way anymore. That has come to an end. Because Jesus has taken over your life. He's become the Lord of your life. Your thoughts must change. Your attitude must change. If you were militant before you became a Christian, now you must change. We are only militant in prayer. <laughs> We're militant in casting out devils. Yeah. And ordering them around. But when it comes to dealing with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, we are lambs. Amen. We're soft-hearted, kind-hearted. That's the way we must be. We don't flex our muscles for our brothers and sisters. We don't try to show them how tough we are. Do you get angry because you feel angry? You feel, you know, some, someone said something to you and you're burning inside. Oh, what me? Oh, what about you? And you're feeling it. The, the fire is burning in your bones right now and you want to eat him up. You're a slave 
of your emotions. Your emotions control you. That's why when you're angry, no one can stop you. You know in some houses, when a guy is angry, he starts hitting and beating anybody. Maybe most especially his wife. So he uses his hands. When she gets angry, she knows what to do. She can't reach him, so she's going to throw things. Or go after him with a knife. <laughs> now, I said that to say this. In some homes, that's the way it is. See? They know how to settle matters. A knife somewhere. The frying pan is flying the other way. <laughs> and there are threats. And after the war, they get back into the car, the same car, and they drive out. And one is driving and the other one says, please look at where you're going. You see, what a life. Did they make this life? Yes, they did. You say, how? He says, out of his belly, he that believeth on me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Oh, what comes out of you? What comes out of your belly? He's talking about your innermost being. What comes out of you? Tell me. For some people, venom. It's venom that comes out when they speak. You wonder where they've been. I remember when I was a kid in school. My first day in this school, I had a terrible experience. I think it took God's miracle to keep me from the trauma that I would have experienced because of that particular day. You know, I was in class sitting by this guy. I was new, first day. I don't know whether he was new or not, but he paid us to sit together in class. For no reason, this guy turned to me and he began to insult me. God, he spoke horrors. The guy said terrible words, things I never imagined in my life. Such bitter words, obscenities. He spoke and spoke. I was shocked and amazed at him. I was looking, I couldn't even reply to him. It is a happy heart. It's good medicine. Wow. If some people knew that that is a good cure for cancer, if they knew, they would apply it. But many are not aware. Cancer triumphs and thrives where people are sad and focusing on the cancer and trying to fight the cancer, and warring with the cancer, saddened by the cancer. That promotes the because cancer has life from bitterness, anger, resentment, and so on. But cheerfulness, laughter, you know, laughter is, a, is an expression of joy. is one of the earliest, fastest, quickest expressions of joy. How many people have cancer and laugh? Not many. And yet the Bible says, in the face of destruction, thou shalt laugh. Imagine that someone has offended you, and you're waiting for that person to come and apologize. And then he's not coming to apologize. He's even acting as though he didn't do nothing wrong. Every day you see him, you're like, is it that he doesn't know what he did? <laughs> you're unhappy. But he's looking happy. Everything is normal with him, and you can't believe it. But well, you're still waiting for him to apologize. You might even get to the point where you begin to pray to God to knock him out and tell him to come and apologize to you. And he's not coming. You know you can have stomach ulcer because of that. 
Because the happier you see him, the more frustrated you are. Now, I'll tell you how to fix, fix that. Instead of wasting days and weeks and months staying and remaining frustrated because of this, whatever it is, that refused to come to you to apologize. And now you're unhappy. And it's affecting you everywhere. Two hours gone. You're supposed to submit something you haven't even started. And then suddenly you hear he's quite close. You pack your things. You have closed. Because he has come close. Instead of doing that, why don't you just go and apologize and end it? You say, I should apologize. He offended me. I know he offended you. But you see, the thing is affecting you and is destroying your life. So why don't you bring it to an abrupt stop by going to him to say, I'm sorry about that. He'll say, ah, I thought I was the one that offended. No, I'm tired of keeping things like this. Look at that. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Who? Who did he accuse? The brethren. God's people. All right? Verse 11. And they, the brethren, and they, the brethren, and they, the brethren, overcame him. Who? Who did they overcome? Satan. Satan the devil. And they, the brethren, overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Stop. By the blood of the Lamb. How did they overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb? You can understand now why we break bread and, 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 and drink that cup every month. And I tell you, do it! Jesus said, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show. Sure Demonstrate, affirm the Lord's death till he comes. Take the bread. That's why the way I show it to you every month, I say, take the bread yourself. Hold it in your hand. When we give the signal, break it. Because that, is, that signifies the broken body of Christ. His body was broken for me. I will never be broken again. When you take that cup, Jesus said, this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. Oh God, this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. That means sealed in my blood. The cup of the New Testament. Because of this new contract, this new testament, this new covenant, do you understand what he's talking about? That means there is no trouble that I get into that I will not overcome. Do you understand? I become a master in all situations. I become a master. Do you understand what he's talking about? I can never be defeated. It's not possible. Forget about it. I'm a winner forever. No matter what happens, you take that cup. This is the cup of the New Testament in his blood. Sealed in his blood. He defeated Satan and gave me the victory. Yesterday was great, but the later is greater. Yesterday was beautiful, but it gets better. I thank the Lord for everything. I'm forever grateful for the things that you've done. And higher I go, brighter I glow, forward I go, no stopping me, no, no. Higher I go, brighter I glow, forward I go, no stopping me. Take a look at me.